What's going on everyone, Mark Roberti here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about five strategies you can use to boost your dividend income. Dividend income is a amazing investment in the sense that you just do some initial research, you pick some stocks or funds, you invest in them, and then you get a dividend every quarter. And you can set up the stock so that you get paid monthly. So you could look for a few stocks that pay in January, some that pay in February, some that pay in March, and then that carries over. So that's the math behind how you get dividend every single month. But to boost your dividend income, there are going to be these five strategies that will help you. And if you do like the idea of learning more about dividend investing, you like the idea of gaining visibility and revenue, do make sure you subscribe because we have more videos coming out all the time just like this one. So the first strategy is just going to be one of those setting the foundation, get clear on what your criteria is. So for some people boosting their dividend income, they are income investors. They just want to make as much money from the dividend right now. And you're looking then at stocks that have a 5% yield or higher. They may not have the ability to grow too much in the future, but they do give you the solid dividend right now. You could also be a dividend growth investor where you're willing to sacrifice some yield in the moment to buy into a company that has a lot more appreciation potential because it has growth opportunities and it is raising the dividend at a very fast clip. So these five to 7% yield companies, they barely raise their yield. Like it's like a 5% raise each year. So we're not talking too much, but you do have the high yield at that moment. While a company that is in the growth phase is having the appreciation and you can see a 20% boost in the dividend. So you go from a 1% yield, let's say, to a 1.2% yield the following year. You keep doing this for 10 years and you have a sizable dividend from that company while knowing it's reliable and that the growth is still there. You can pick something in the middle. I like Cisco as that thing in the middle. It has around a three or 4% yield, just depending on where the stock price goes. And it grows at around 8% each year, the dividend, just based on some of the past data. So that's the first thing. Know what type of investor you are. You could even go into REITs, which offer very high dividends, but the dividends count as ordinary income. So they don't have the same tax benefits as a regular dividend stock, which is why the dividends have to be so high to compensate. But first strategy, no what your criteria is. The second strategy to boost your dividend income is to set a baseline for how much money you are going to invest each month. So let's say you start with $200 each month, you're going to invest in stocks or you're going to invest in an index fund that offers a dividend. You have this baseline and you can go over it. So let's say you're at 200 per month and that's how much you put into different stocks and you make some extra money or you have some extra money sitting down. All right, let's do 300 for this month. And you do that for that one month. You could go back to your baseline of 200 a month and stay there. Or you could decide, okay, I feel comfortable now doing $300 a month. Let me do that. And it's these gradual monthly investments that really have a big effect on the dividend income. Like you can look at stocks, you can do all the analytical research and crunch all the numbers, but at the end of the day, you need money in the system to make more money. So having a monthly investment is going to keep yourself accountable. As you invest in more stocks, it's going to get easier, which we'll talk about very soon to maintain those investments, but definitely make it a point to raise it. Like have a goal, let's say you're at 200 right now per month, but you can do have a goal to make that 500 a month within three months, six months, a year, depending on what you want to do, but never go lower than your baseline. So do whatever you can with the exception of getting into debt because to do dividend investing on margin or debt kind of defeats the purpose unless you're in growth investing. But do everything you can to maintain the baseline, that minimum $200 per month, whatever it is for you, even if it's just under just a little under $50 a month or around there, just set your baseline for yourself and build on it, set goals for yourself and set deadlines for those goals so you are able to build up on your monthly investment total. Strategy number three is to reinvest the dividend. Now, 
you don't want to do this every single time. There's like a few scenarios where it doesn't entirely make sense. So if you are very overweight in a position, like let's say for some reason you have a dividend stock that pays well, but it's 20% of your portfolio, it would be good to take that dividend and invest it into another company that does dividends because you don't want to be overweight in one area of your portfolio. So if you look at, let's say, at and it's an example I bring up a lot, and that's a ginormous percentage of your portfolio, then it does make more sense to just distribute the money into other companies because then your portfolio kind of turns into, you know, if at and does good, the portfolio does good. If it does bad, the portfolio does bad. You just want to be able to spread risk a little bit. But for 99% of people, it's going to make sense to reinvest the dividends and the dividend payment and the dividend reinvestment, some people, they can count that to their monthly investment total. I personally don't like to, but it is still extra money that you are investing back into the stock. So you can reach a point where let's say every quarter you get $100 from a certain stock and your baseline is $200, you already have $100 covered from the dividend and you can get to the point where the dividend automatically covers some months of your baseline. And this is going to be more valuable for people who maybe they feel a little financially strapped or they don't want to overcommit. So you can have those dividend reinvestments definitely count towards the baseline to make sure you are at that minimum and even to exceed it as well. The fourth strategy we have is to buy dividend stocks on their dips. So this is a strategy called DCA dollar cost averaging. Pretty much if you buy 10 shares of something at 40 and then it goes down to 30 and you buy 10 shares at 30, your average cost price is $35 per share because you bought 10 at 30, 10 at 40, it averages out to 35. And that's your what they call your dollar cost average per share to have that position. So instead of being down to $10, if you bought at 40 and now it's 30, you buy at 30, it cushions the blow a little bit, especially if the stock goes up, then you just get to your break even point sooner. But buying on the dip also lets you buy more shares. And if this is a reliable company, then you're getting more shares of company that's going to pay the dividend even more. So with Cisco, because I mentioned that earlier, it was at the high 50s at some point. And then because of everything that happened, it got down to the mid 30s. And that's an opportunity for people to buy more shares of a company like Cisco. If it makes sense for their portfolio and their criteria, it makes sense for them to do that. And then you have more quantity of shares, which means more dividends. The fifth strategy I'm going to recommend is the hardest strategy for dividend income investors, and that is not to get too attached to any company that you invest in. The reason for this is that if you're getting the 5% yield, but the company's down 10% for a year, then you didn't make money. You lost money. And it feels good to have the 5% yield, but at what cost does it come? You don't want to put $100 into something so that you can make $5 a year and then see that that $100 has turned into 90. That's a net loss. And you could make the argument depending on the company that, hey, you know, it'll rebound. I could DCA, which is the buy on the dip that I mentioned just a little bit earlier, but you don't want to get too attached to any company. You do want to invest in companies that have good fundamentals, good finances, but just because a company has good finances now doesn't mean it's going to continue to have those good finances. There's like a likelihood some companies are just more likely to have the good finances, to continue to have the growth, to continue to raise their dividends. Others are not as likely, but the more you look out like 10 years, 20 years, because dividend investing is definitely a long-term game, it gets a, the future of any company or any dividend gets a little more hazy where we have the whole lockdown and a lot of dividends have been entirely suspended or they've been slashed. So you do, I mean, this is a very situational event, but with that said, you do want to make sure that the company you invest in, the fundamentals are still the fundamentals you'd be happy with and not to be emotionally attached to stocks. If it makes sense to sell, sell. If 
it makes sense to hold on to it, then just hold on to it. And if it's something where you're happy to weather out the storm and you feel like the company can rebound and go for it, but don't be lured into a company because it has a high dividend yield and you receive a lot of money for what you put in, but then it depreciates so much that you didn't make money from this investment. You actually lost money because of what the stock price is in relation to what the dividend payment is. So those are five strategies to help you boost your dividend income. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, definitely smash the like button and let me know in the comments so that I know you guys like these videos and then I produce more of them. And if you do want more videos like this one and you have not yet subscribed, make sure you do hit the subscribe button because I always love to welcome people in my community. So signing off, dream big, achieve greatness, and unlock your potential today.